Hey besties. I'm in the kitchen because I haven't been able to stop thinking about that purple that I made uh, accidentally with the black light blue and fluorescent red. So we're going to deliberately make this dye today and we're going to dye up a bunch of fibers. I just dropped that in the water. That was very talented of me. <sighs> I tell you, my coordination knows no bounds. Anyways, we're going to do that today and uh, hopefully I can get it to a color that I like. So let's adjust the camera and get to it. One second. So I decided I wanted to try this on a bunch of different fibers and this way we can also see how different fibers take up the dye. I've got the kettle going, that's what the noise is in the background. So I have some Yak and Silk here. This is Superwash Merino. And then beside it, this is some Silk. And kind of buried underneath it a little bit is some Fogora. And then this is Rambouillet. Now the Rambouillet should take the color softer than some of these other fibers but I don't know that for sure so we're gonna find out now these have been soaking in just plain water with a little bit of soap just to help that silk soak it up but because I want an all-over color what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with an empty pan and we're gonna put, that's not a very clean empty pan, I'll give that a quick wipe. We're gonna put dye in first, then put the fibers into the dye so that it's underneath and we should get really good coverage and penetration, we're hoping. But that's the plan. And then next we'll be figuring out our proportions for our dye. So I have my four cup here I got my two colors. Now we know that the red is very strong and the black light blue is not. So I'm going to probably do like a three to one and see where we end up to start. And we'll tweak it from there. I'm just gonna grab a couple of Q-tips. Be back in a second. Q-tips, cotton buds, whatever you wanna call them. But because these are cotton, they're not going to take the dye, but I'm just going to use them to just dip and see what the color looks like on white. If you're really serious about dyeing and getting it absolutely perfect, you can get little wool buds like this so that you can test the colors and see how they look on wool. But this is going to do for my purposes. So I'm just going to let the water finish heating up and we'll be back and we will start playing with colors. All right, the kettle is almost hot. So we're going to go three to one. I'm going to do an eighth of a teaspoon. One, two, three of the blue. And we're going to do one of the fluorescent red. So that's what we're going to start with and we're going to see what color we get out of this. All right, kettle's boiled. I forgot my whisk. Just going to add a little splash and mix this up. Let's see what we get. That's pretty intense. But because there's a lot of dye in there, we're not getting a really good look at that purple that I want, which is going to be so much more less um, saturated. That's just purple, purple. That's not the color I want. I think we need to add some more blue. So I'm going to add two more scoops of blue. So we'll do a five to one ratio. Okay. 
Oh, that's looking better. I can just see it on the splashes on the side of the cup. Now that blue is, it's a very soft, non-saturated color. So I know that we're going to have to use a lot more of that than the red. Still looking really dark. Okay, let's dilute it a bit and see how it comes up because it's just too saturated right now. We're going to need a lot of it, so I'm going to go up to the full four cups. There we go. That's better. Oh yeah, I like that. Can you see it? Still not quite right. I think actually it might need just a smidge more of the red. So we're at five to one. So let's go five to two. And see where that gets us. There, that's better. It's got that rosy, purpley look to it that I like. Okay, so we're doing five to two. Here's our pan, and we're going to jump in. Go two cups of this. Oof! The heat makes it jump. Okay, that's about two cups. And then I'm going to add a little bit more just regular water just to dilute it out a bit. My measuring cups are on the top shelf and I just had my back adjusted and I can't climb up to get them. So we're just using our bowl, which holds about two cups of water. Well, we're getting more burgundy than a purple, but I'm kind of liking the color. I'm not mad about it. Although maybe, here I go, second guessing myself again. Let's just start with this and we'll see where we get with it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fiber out of my soaking pan and add it to this pan. I just gave it a quick squeeze. Hello, Latte. What's up, my darling? There's our Fogora. And our Silk. Superwash Merino. And our yak silk. Now, there is no citric acid in this at all yet. Don't stick your hands in the dye. I mean, I always have dyed hands. I don't know what I'm worried about, but there it is. All right. Oops. Get that over there. Now, this way we have dye underneath, and we can do dye over top as well. And then that way we should get good saturation of color. We're starting to get that purpley color is coming through as it's soaking up some of that dye. But we're going to go for a darker shade. And I think what I'm going to do to get like some more tonal, like this kind of Gives it an all over bit of color. But I think what I'm going to do with the rest of it. 
So I'm going to add my citric acid to this dye. And then we're just going to pour it over the top. And we're not going to dilute this anymore. So technically, this is another one color. Even though it's a made color, it's technically another one color dye. So I should get points for this. All right. Put in about a quarter of a cup of citric acid. Give that a mix. All right, now we're just going to pour it over. There we go. Now I'm not going to touch it. I so want to poke it, but I'm not going to poke it. See this? This is me not poking it. I want to poke it. Okay. All right. All right. Don't touch. Because I really like these tonal shades, but I just want to poke it so bad. <gasps> All right, I got the oven preheating. I'm going to grab my uh, tin foil. Oh, this is starting out so pretty. Don't poke it. <laughs> you know me and my uncontrollable poking. I'm loving how this is coming out. If you look at the super wash, because it sucks up the color so quickly, it's like it's breaking. And it's pulling out more of the burgundy reddish into that. But the silk and the Fogora, the silk especially, has got that beautiful tonal purple. That, oh, this is so cool. I'm loving how every fiber is taking up the dye differently. I'm really liking this experiment. I guess we could classify this as Controlled chaos, maybe? Hmm. All right, well, I'm going to get this in the oven. It's pretty cool, so I'm going to bake it for probably 20 minutes. And then we'll have a look and see how it's going. And uh, make adjustments from there if necessary. So funny I have this oven and I really only use it for baking fiber <laughs> very very rarely do I use it for baking food <laughs> all right let's have a look oh oh it's looking so pretty let's see Ooh, we still got quite a bit of dye though oh yeah there's a lot of dye in there yet now we haven't added much citric acid to this honestly look at how i don't know if you can see it on camera but the super wash has got like some yellows and browns in it from the way the colors break that's not the super wash that's the fulgora i've got it the other way around this is the super wash but it kind of did the same thing but that silk, wow, that looks amazing. Oh, I'm doing creepy voice. Ooh, it looks amazing, my precious. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not here for the weird, why are you even here? <laughs> All right, let's see. We don't really have any color on this side. It just seems to be over in that corner. Let's kind of slosh it around a little bit. I have to be careful because there is a little bit of soap in here. Okay. I'm going to mix up some more citric acid. And plop that on top. And now my brain is saying to add a little more blue. But I don't know if I should listen or not. <laughs> oh, you know me. It's so hard for me to just do one color. There's still a lot of purple in there, so I'm going to restrain myself. I'm just going to lift these up. 
Oh, that silk is amazing. Oh, it's so gorgeous. This superwash made some really interesting colors. And the yak silk has got barely any tint to it at all. Okay, stop poking it. Hmm. I'm really tempted to add a little more blue, but no, no. Stick to the experiment. half cup of citric acid. Give it a really good shot. I wonder though if I take this from this side and this from this side and just reverse them. That might feed my need to add more dye. So this is the Fulgora, and somehow it's pulling green. And I don't know how it's doing that. It's pulling like a green and a yellow. And I have no idea how it's doing that. <laughs> I really don't, but it is. So there we go. I don't know what to say about that. just be a second for the kettle to boil here then we'll add some more citric acid and we'll pop it up back in the oven for another I think we'll give it another 15 minutes and see how it turns out so I'll be back when it's cooked again all right yay yay don't touch the pan just the tin foil okay ready here we go Whoosh. How's it looking? Oh, look at that purple. I am in love with that purple. It is so pretty. Like, look at that silk. Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. I still cannot figure out how that foregore. Oh, Gora got that green. That's amazing. All right, so there's still a little bit of color left in here. But again, we're using a red. Reds tend to not exhaust very well. So, and there is more than enough citric acid in this pan. So, I'm just going to let it cool in the pan for a little while. And if there's still color in there, well, then that's too bad. It's getting rinsed out and we're going to move on. So the next time you should see this fiber, it will be washed and dried and we'll be ready to have a closer look at it. All right. It's first thing in the morning. I'm still drinking coffee. Mmm. It's good. But the fiber's dry, so we have to have a look because it turned out so interesting, guys. So first... Here's our yak silk. It is so pretty. It's got that purpley tone to it that the silk picked up really well. And then the yak has just a little bit of a taste of that color over dyed. Now remember, these were all done in the same pan. So here's the superwash. You can see it picked up the color pretty good, but it does have some spots of like a peachy color that I'm not sure where it came from. <laughs> Seeing as how we use blue and red, but that tells you what the undertones were, right? But it's really pretty. Next we had our silk. And this is beyond spectacular. Now I kind of mangled it up in the bath, so it's, you know, fuzzy and stuff, but I'm just looking at the colors. And they are freaking fantastic. It's got that tonal purple that I like so much. You know me, I hate a flat color. And into pinks. And it's just so, so pretty. Now here's where things get really interesting. 
Next, we have our Fulgora. Same bath, guys. Same bath, same length of time, same amount of dye, same everything. But look at how it came out. It's totally different. It's more like this yellowy green color with some pinks and maybe some little pops of purple, some peaches in there. But the color came out so different. And finally, we have a Ramboulet. Again, it went like the Fulgora. And this one's got some brownie peaches and some yellows, some little pops of some purple, but mostly it's this yellowy green color, which to me is just utterly fascinating. But that tells you how different fibers take the dye up, cat hair everywhere, take the dye up differently because these were all done the exact same way, the exact same way. But this one, being the superwash, struck first. Now, I don't know if it sucked up all the dye and this was all that was left over for the other fibers, but these ones were slower to take up that dye. So they ended up with just these pastel colors, which are really nice. The silk took the dye up fantastic. It's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. And the silk in the yak silk did the same. So I'm thinking that these three absorbed the dye quicker, which left less for these two to soak up, which led to these pastels and these yellows and these greens. So you can see that what fiber you're using is going to affect how it dyes. It's just one of those little experiments that shows you how cool it is, how different fibers take things differently. And I am just utterly in love with how these all turned out. So you know what we got to do? We're going to spin a sample. We'll do a little bit of each of them. I'm trying to decide if I want to blend something, but I think we're just going to do a little bit of each of it as a single. And then we'll chain ply it just to get an idea of what it looks like when it's spun up and how it's going to work up into a sample. Just because, you know, I have to try. But these just, these fascinate me. Just how they, the variances across the wools is just so interesting to me. Okay, let's get spinning.
So just as a reminder, here's what our fibers look like in the braids. And again, these were all done in the same bath. Now, this is not a superwash. It wasn't a bag that said superwash merino, but I don't think it's superwash. I think it's merino, but I don't think it's superwash. It's not as silky as superwash usually is, but maybe it is. Hard to say. But I just thought I'd mention that that I think was mislabeled. But here's our colors. And here's our sample. So I just did 10 stitches and then worked my way up through it. So let's get this folded up so we can see each one individually or sort of individually. So here is the yak silk. I did crochet, a few rows of knit, and then some more crochet. So you can see how it has that pretty purplish pink cast to it. It's very, very pretty. So there's the braid and there's the yarn. The next we had this so-called superwash, which isn't a superwash. <laughs> and I did the same thing. I did some crochet, some knit, and some crochet. And you can see how you can see how the colors sort of pool and they're just kind of fun. So there's the braid and there's the end result. The next we had the silk. Now the silk spun up really fine. So the sample is really wonky, but that's just because I didn't change my gauge. But you can see how the colors pull and I love it. It is so pretty. Now it's a lot lighter than it looks in the braid because the white um, fades out the color. So you can see once you spin it up, you're going to lose a lot of that darkness, but it is still like very, very pretty. The next, we had the Fogora. Where's my Fogora? There it is. Now this is the one that really just went its own way. It chose to be an entirely different color. And this is what it looks like worked up. Now, it kind of just looks like a dirty color to me. That yellow has got a very browny undertone. And it just sort of looks dirty. It doesn't look as brown in the camera, but it does have like a dirty look to it. But I think if I blended this, even with some white, I think that would bring that color up to a different brightness. I just find it so interesting that these were all done in the same dye bath and they just took it up so differently. But Fulgora spins up very, very dense. So using it as a blending fiber is better advised, I would think. But there's that one with the braid. Get it up where you can see it. There we go. All right, so that leaves us with our last, which was our Rambouillet. Now, this one took up the dye pretty much the same as the Fulgora. Like, if we put them side by side, they're pretty close to the same kind of dye. But for some reason, the Rambouillet takes on a more yellow tone. And it doesn't look dirty. It just looks pastel and sort of blah, honestly. <laughs> It's not the best colors. So there's the worked up sample and the braid. And I'm wondering if I mix the Fulgora with the Rambouillet, if that would fix that color problem that I have. Or it just might make it even muddier. And I think that's what the problem is. The color is just kind of muddied at this stage. 
But the yarn itself is really nice and stretchy and soft because it's Rambouillet. So, of course, it is. But there is our interesting experiment in dyeing different fibers in the same jelly bath and just seeing how the uptake was so different. I think it was a fascinating experiment and I really had fun with it because you know me, I'll do anything. I'm just like that. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration and I hope you had as much fun as I did. Thanks for joining me as usual and I shall see you in the next one. Dr. Chaos out.